running a stoic platform for the time that I ran it and teaching of stoicism to hundreds of thousands. I get asked every single question imaginable and every question you could possibly ask about stoicism. And over the years with research and giving this advice, I think I can answer every single question about stoicism and I think I can give a good answer. And I give good answers every day. I answer all these questions about emotion, how to implement stoicism in certain aspects of life, how I can get over certain problems. But there is one question that I get asked quite a lot and I could never answer it fully. I could never be happy with my answer until recently. The Stoics teach of the dichotomy of control, they teach of focusing on what you can control and these things that you can control. And by focusing on what you can control, taking responsibility, living with arete, you can achieve eudaimonia, this human flourishing, this perfect state that the Stoics would try to achieve. And I've always said this state of eudaimonia, the most amazing thing about Stoicism, is available to everyone. It's available right now to everyone. But I would always get a comment or a message saying, hey, I suffer from um, some form of psychosis. I suffer from this. I cannot quite control my thoughts. I cannot quite have power over these things. Uh, the Stoics are then wrong. Stoicism is wrong. I, I do not fit into this dichotomy of control. I cannot live this life of eudaimonia. I cannot live in accordance with nature because I have this condition and this is stopping me. And many, many people think this is like the horcrux of Stoicism. And for a long time, I also thought this was like a horcrux of Stoicism. I, I tried to reason thinking, well, this or well, that. So I figured out the most perfect answer for this problem. And it is not horcrux at all. It actually bolsters the teachings of Stoicism even further. It, it just proves why Stoicism is a great philosophy and a the perfect practical guide for your life on how to live the good life. And this realization came from talking to an author. She said to me, well, isn't this the point of Stoicism? That there is people that are suffering, there's people that need our help, and Stoicism teaches of the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. Under justice falls fairness, kindness. Um, it teaches to help people. So Stoicism, is literally saying there is people in this world that are suffering but if you watched my previous video sympathia we're all tied in the same nature we must treat everyone as someone we love there's going to be people struggling follow stoicism live this life of eudaimonia and you can help these people that too that are struggling you can help them and help them see things from a certain way you can help them live a life with less pain less suffering you can help be a good role model for them so that they too can live this life of eudaimonia. They too can be a stoic. People do have a harder time fitting into certain paths, using certain philosophies in their life. And people find using stoicism as a practical guide in their life, they find it difficult. But this is the point of stoicism. This justice is to not just be selfish, you see, this is where people get stoicism wrong and where 99% of people that find stoicism, like myself, um, so I'm guilty of this, I saw stoicism as this thing that could make me into a great person. I seen it as a way to eliminate anxieties, worries, fears, help me be a confident person. And it did this. It did all of this and more. But partway along my journey, maybe a year or two in stoicism, I realized it's not about me. That's the selfish view. And I think, yeah, this is what gets people interested because we are quite selfish naturally. But if you keep delving into Stoicism, it's about being a part of this cosmic nature. Um, sympathia, the idea that everything is interwoven, all our nature is interwoven. This was taught by the Stoics. And it means we must be good to everyone. What is not good for the bee is not good for the beehive. Something that is good for you should also be good for others. Something that is good for others should be good for you. So this idea of building your character, building your strength, your resilience, your um, going against worries, anxieties, if it's, it's only for you, then it could be a selfish act. It could lead you to be this person that has no worry, has no anxiety, has no fear, is full confident, so that you can go out there and scam people, rip people off. You have no anxiety or worry or shame anymore. You can go out there and do bad things. But no, Stoicism teaches of sympathy 
that we must be good people for the community around us. So, this horcrux of stoicism, um, this question I could never fully answer. And I felt bad because I always tried to give my best answer on Instagram or YouTube. I always try to give my best answer. And this one, I kind of just, it was like, oh, well, this, this. It was never good enough for me, which it's not good enough for you all. So I think this answers it. This is why we need stoicism. It's just, it's not about being selfish. It's about helping these people that are struggling. So hopefully if you've been looking for what's wrong with stoicism, people always say, this is what's wrong with stoicism. Stoicism is making people emotionless. Uh, stoicism leads to people being weak and walked all over. These are easy to answer. Stoicism is about being in tune with your emotions. Uh, it's got nothing to do about being emotionless. It never teaches this. This is just a weird misconception. And stoicism allows people to walk out all over you. People say because you accept things, you love everyone. Um, they think it's about being walked all over. This is not true. Accepting things is about being vulnerable to life. It's about letting life hurt you, being open and so vulnerable to these things that build your strength. It makes you so strong and so resilient because the opposite is to put up a shield and hide away from these pains of life. That is the weakness that people just don't see. So, um, and then the idea of loving everyone, this idea of sympathy, um, which my example is to by loving everyone. What I mean by this is to show people love in the greater sense of this interwoven nature. People do bad things, people hurt people. The love that you show is to punish them. And as Socrates taught of punishment, punishment isn't to harm people. Punishment is to do what is right by this person. So if this person cannot join in society, it cannot be a member of society, and Aristotle spoke of this, is if they cannot be a member of society, then one, they're either a god, or two, they're either a beast because they're not fitting into the society that is part of our human nature. We were given society and reason. These are things that are human. And to be human is to take part in these things. And it doesn't mean you have to um, follow all these rules of society, shake hands, say good morning, say good morrow. Um, but by, um, by punishing someone uh, that's harming society, uh, we can take them away from society, reform them, help them to see what they're doing is wrong, help them stop hurting others. Because hurting others is also hurting the self. They're degrading their character and making themselves a worse person. They're hurting the loved ones around them. So it's not about being weak. None of the Stoics taught about rolling over and let, letting life hurt you or get people getting away with things. Zeno taught his followers to go out there and be just, to see where there's problems and fix these problems. So... Hopefully this answered your question because I see people saying stoicism was wrong, sto stoicism's greatest weakness, but I'm still looking for it. Hey, <laughs> thank you for watching. This is a short video off the top of my head. There was no, um, I just wanted, this idea came to me and I wanted to answer it. So thank you for watching. Um, if you want videos like this, also more structured videos, heavier edited videos, videos on concepts you may find interesting, answering all your stoic ideas, how to implement stoicism into your life to live the best life, become the best version of you, then subscribe. Um, if you want to support what I'm doing, please consider becoming a YouTube member. Um, there's membership perks that I think will only help you learn more about stoicism, but stoicism is always free. So if you don't want to do that, it's always free to you. Just maybe leave a comment because it helps support what I'm doing and I appreciate it. And it shows that you also appreciate what I'm doing. And the Memento Mori life calendar, you can get 10% off now with code Memento Mori. The link is below. The Memento Mori life calendar is just a calendar that every week you fill out a black square. This resembles the week that has just passed. So you, basically, you're counting down to the day that you die. And the Stokes believed in this concept of Memento Mori. And if you follow this, I have followed this for a long time in my life and it alleviated so much fears and anxieties and worries. It's the most powerful tool as Steve Jobs said, in the face of death, nearly all problems fall away. But it doesn't just eliminate all these problems. It helps you be present right now and be grateful for the very second you have. Because that square, which is the second square of year 27, that square may never get filled out. I could maybe not even post this video. I might die before posting this video. So right now as I'm filming the video, I'm present. I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm here. 
Um, because what else is there to do? Be distant somewhere else in the past with regrets, mistakes, sadness, or in the future with anxiety and worry. No, we live in the present and when you be present, you follow this idea of momentum mori. 99.9% .9 of your problems will fall away like it did for me and hopefully many millions more. So I appreciate that. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Uh, follow me on Instagram at The Everyday Stoic or my personal page at William Mulligan Brother where I share more stoicism, more personal things um, and hopefully you just enjoy it and it helps you. I'm trying to spread positivity on social media rather than this rubbish that we see every single day. Okay. Now, for the people that actually made it this far, this is the, um, this is the real test. Um, comment. Ah, brilliant. Comment meditations. Meditations is the Stoic book by Mox Aurelius, simply put. But actually, it's his personal diary of the great emperor. He wrote it for himself. It was advice for himself to help him become a great person. Um, and then after his death, some sneaky person got a hold of it and published it. And now, almost 2,000 years later, I've got hold of it. It is the greatest book I've ever read. Um, it has helped me so much. And I, like, it's very bad. Like, I've completely destroyed it because, I mean, it's fallen apart. Awfully. Um, but I take it every single place I go. I make notes on it every day. I read it every day, multiple times a day. It's just incredible. And um, that is my advice to you, is read this book. And on this page, I will be reading this book. I will be um, explaining every single paragraph, every single entry into his personal diary, because I've read it, I don't know how many times, hundreds of times. So comment, meditations, if you made it this far. That was a long way of asking for um, a comment, which helps gets engagement on this video which helps boost this video to more people so more people see the stoic message i'm william mulligan and today you learned about stoicism's biggest downfall which isn't a downfall